All right, here we are. We're going to do a commentary on King's Quest 7. I've done the same thing that I did with King's Quest 6. I've actually sped up the gameplay because King's Quest 7 ended up being about six hours of gameplay. So I think I managed to get it like a hair over an hour. So here we are, King's Quest 7. With that in mind, here's the Disney type intro that King's Quest 7 first introduces with Rosella singing uh, in a very Disney-esque fashion. And the animation is even an attempt to be Disney-like. Uh, we also saw this type of animation in Torrent's Passage, which I've not played yet. Uh, well, I've played it, just not for this channel. So Rosella's mom is basically telling Rosella that, hey, you know, there's someone who wants to court you. It's time that you get married and do your wifely princess type duty and the mom's like you know these guys are great and Rosella's like nah I want to find someone who actually I love and then this little thing flies from the water and Rosella jumps in and the mom picks up the little thing her hairpiece and then Rosella is suddenly taken away by uh, a troll by all looks of things so we start a new game let's play oops I've already used that one from a uh, previous so let's do Sierra on. Starting with chapter one. Rosella's, Rosella's mother is here, and uh, she's like, where's Rosella? And she automatically walks and then tears her dress. And it's King's Quest, or it's Sierra. So anything that happens, you basically pick up, for example. Because you'll never know what you're going to need. So you look around. Um... I didn't like how the format is for this. Uh, it's very... It didn't feel as flowy as the other King's Quest. So we pick up like a stick and then some salt rocks. And also another thing that I didn't enjoy is that you can't make multiple saves. And the reason being is it is impossible to dead end in this game. No matter where you go, what you do, you can always get back to something you need. And that actually happens to me uh, a little bit later. There is something here that... Sorry, my corgi is demanding attention. Uh, there is actually something here on this screen um, that I forgot to grab. And later on in the game thought I dead-ended and then realized I could still get back here. So you go inside the cave. There's a box. Take it. Because that's what you do. Open the box, look inside. Oh, look, there's something inside the box. And so that was one of the cool things about this game, is that you could actually look at the inventory items, and sometimes if you spun them around or looked at them different, you might see something that's going to provide you a clue. That's just a dead end. So we take this seed and plant it, and lo and behold, that is the quickest growing thing ever. And it's your corn. So if you look in there, it's that stupid jackrabbit thing. There is something I forgot to do. There's this dude's door. And he basically uh, talks in rhymes and he offers things to trade. So you can give him something and he will trade it. And that stupid jackrabbit keeps coming around. Uh, he basically says, I can't trade because I don't have my glasses. And that's why that jackrabbit shows up with the glasses. So there's something there, but you can't quite get it because of the thorns. That is one thing I did like about this King's Quest that is if there was an inventory item, you can actually hover over it and it'll let you, you know, the wand or whatever you want to call it sort of sparkles. So you talk to this guy, he basically talks that he's cursed to walk the earth forever. So obviously we need to find a way to help him.
So you look at the tracks and you see that something has come through here. And you find out it's missing something. Now, I've played King's Quest 7 before, so a lot of this, because it is it is an easy game because you can't dead end, um, a lot of it came back to me fairly quickly as I was playing it. So what you want to do is look here, it kind of gives you some clues about, oh look, there's corn and water and it's refreshed. So you just got to figure out what to do with these. Kind of, they can go anywhere, move them around, and it doesn't seem like anything is like the right clue. But you fill that up. Give the corn to his hand. Anytime you look at the brush thing, she cries. So we have poison water. We've now tilted it. Cry some tears in there. Turn the head. Now it's all sunny. And now we get the water. And the water tastes good. So from above, you can see that there's something down there. So obviously we need to get down there at some point. And you can and will uh, die in this desert if you wander around too long. So we've refreshed the water and he talked about how he can't quench his thirst. So now we basically have to try to find this guy. And he quickly turns around and walks away like that. So you have to be kind of quick to get him the water. So if you talk to him first, you offer him water. Now his thirst has been quenched. And now he's going to help you. So you just have to follow him. And there's his cursed body. So you get some, like, bug killer. So it's a little misleading that Trumpet looks a lot like his uh, bones. But when you look at his bones, it's not there, so... So as you see, that is a bug killer, and it's just cloth. That's like a gourd. So if you go in here... A giant scorpion comes out, and apparently you can just throw the bug thing at the scorpion, and it makes him shrink and go away. So here's another puzzle where you've got some things here, like buttons to push, and symbols all around. So you've kind of got to figure it out that some of them, like that, are clickable, and they move, and that now that lets in sun. So now you have this idea that there's two things in his hand and you need to somehow redirect the light to those uh, specific spots like that and that. But is that the right combination? There you go. Now this reveals this piece of arrow thing, which it kind of looks like it might be what is required to fit outside that door. But as you see, clearly not the whole piece. So what you can do is get the rabbit, or get the rabbit, the jackrabbit back by blowing the horn in there, and that gets you the glasses, which you can now return to this guy and start doing trades with. Now, I don't remember which items required what for trade. So, 
this will be a, a bit of hunt and pecking. Anytime he replies to you, he gives you like a rhyme as to what you've given him and what he'll offer you. And she'll automatically say, no, that's not a good idea if that's not part of the trade that she needs. So that's kind of nice that you don't end up with random items or give away an item that you need. Because once again, you cannot actually dead end in this game that I'm aware of. So you trade the Gord Seed for a Turquoise Bead. See how they rhyme. That is also one of the nice things, uh, when, if and when you do die in this game, you pretty much just land right where you died, and you can keep moving. Uh, there's a, a, I'm guessing a timer bug with this game, because there's a part later on, uh, <laughs> and so she sticks me back to where I can actually escape from the desert, because it keeps from putting me back at the guy with the skull. Um, but there's a part later on in the game where you get a firecracker, and uh, literally you have to walk like two or three screens and the firecracker keeps blowing up in my hands and killing me but it's moving me each time to where I died so I was actually able to keep moving forward but I died about six times with this firecracker and you'll see that a little bit later so I'm trying to remember uh, how this happened so there we go we get the turn this in the right direction the well goes down you go in here and now there's pieces uh, one of these pieces is the one you're going to need. So if you take it without offering, it goes poorly. And so you put in the blue bead and he nods. And if you try to take more than one, it goes poorly. So that wasn't the right one. So what I will do now I'll take the other one. So I just tried to put it in and but then you actually have to combine the two and this opens this door. So using the stick you're able to get that fruit out. The prickly pear. So a big salamander comes out, and we go to chapter two, where we see not only has Rosella been grabbed, but she's been turned into a troll. And Rosella now realizes she's a troll, but he says, you're a beautiful troll. Now there's more to that troll than what you first see, which will be revealed way later at the end of the game. So that's the King of Trolls who, uh, who you're now uh, engaged to. And she's untrusting of you, knows that you're a human, pretending to, she thinks you're pretending to be a troll, essentially. Mm -hmm. 
And then Rosella pretty much explains, no, I don't want to be a troll. I'm actually trying to get out of here. The girl comes out with a rat toy and drops it. So naturally that means you pick it up. That shield lit up, so you can and you can take that shield apart, which you'll see later comes into play. So that's one of the cool things, like I said earlier, that I did like that you can actually see a 3D view of your item, and it might have more to do. And here we have two male trolls who are just hanging out in their uh, underwear. Not a lot going on, but then she shows up and you overhear her she's got that damn dog which will be a problem later the trolls basically tell you about her that she's like running the show and that she's not a nice person So there's a way we have to actually get something from the kitchen, but getting it is difficult. So what you actually have to do is, yeah. so every time, that's one of the other cool things is that it has that fast forward button. So use the mouse basically here and he tries to catch the mouse, goes into the other room and the door shuts and you get the mouse back somehow. So now you can go in here, grab like this bowl, check out this little device thing, which kicks out some random beetles. Always check for anything you might be able to pick up. Not if we go into this room, but uh, so it's the baked beetles. So the guy banging away on the anvil is like this smarmy, like, hey, how you doing kind of troll. And Rosella basically says, well, I am going to be married to the king. The voice acting in King's Quest Seven is like hot and cold. Like these characters were fine. Uh, there's other characters later on that are in the, I'll just say the dog city that are absolutely annoying. Far worse than Cedric by miles. Like the one who yells about the sky is falling is beyond annoying. The governor dog is also annoying. Uh, so you go, but that's, oh, I'll get into that later. So when you go into this room, she talks about how it smells and stuff like that. You pick up the lantern. And there's sulfur on the other side over there that we need to try to get a hold of. But apparently jumping over there is not super easy. 
So I tried a few different times, a few different ways. And I'm still not even sure how I got over there, like how she finally did it correctly. Because I tried to jump from there before and it didn't work, so. Use the bowl to get some of that green gunk. Over there, light the lantern. Run back over here. Now I know exactly what to do here. It's this wagon wheel. You have to put the shield on there, but for the life of me, this was not working. You're supposed to put the wagon wheel on, and then you put the spike through it to hold it, hold the wheel in place. So I tried it zoomed in, zoomed out, the whole everything. Nothing wants to work. Now the reason being you need this is this troll comes up and he won't let you pass. So obviously we need to get past him and uh, can't figure out why that is not working. So it might be that you have to trigger the troll first to come out uh, before you're able to put it on. That may be what I did wrong initially. So you run him over and knock him into lava and kill him, supposedly. But you know, you hear this like, sounds like sleeping, sad sleeping. Make your way across and there is a dragon. And the art for the dragon looks odd. Like everything else looks very cartoon, but then the dragon has like almost like a CGI spark to it. Like it looks different the animation than the rest of the uh, King's Quest game. So you use the lantern basically after you've lit it in the torch. See how it looks weird? And uh, give her her spark back and she goes and flies. And the reason you're doing this is um, the other troll woman says, you know, she needs like beetles, uh, the scale of a dragon, and a couple other ingredients to essentially help Rosella. So now you're trying to gather these ingredients. So now she's out there flying around and does not land for a while. So now if you go in here, it's changed to two women who provide a few clues about what to do. The cool thing is, like I said, down below, if you start something, there is that fast forward button if you've already heard it and you can actually skip what she says, like right there. So he just wants to be rich and do more, so you give him the little stone that you found. And he leaves. Now you have the hammer and chisel. Throw that in there, and that knocks him out. You take the tongs. And now you have a spoon. I put the tongs back. It's just a silver spoon. The dragon should now be back. Oh, 
But now the dragon who had promised to help you is like, no, too tired. So you just basically chisel off a piece of the dragon scale, which you now have. So now we can start giving her the components to help Rosella. Now Rosella drinks it, and she realizes she did something wrong. And there we go. And Rosella's turned back to human. And somehow the Troll King just appears, and so does she now. So she locks Rosella back into the room. And now we notice that the picture is smoking. Now the items in this room are clearly visible that you can move them because they look a little more brighter than the rest of the room. I like that you fall and it all just goes back to the original location. So move the photo, climb through, and now you hear... Um, forgot what her name is, Militia, Melinda, whatever her name is. And she's got this plan about like starting the lava and all this other stuff that will cause chaos. And this troll king is like, oh man, it's not what I really want to do. So Rosella falls through, ends up outside in the throne room again and picks up a uh, toad. So you overhear the evil chick and this chick talking and how she hates her. So now you go and you can look around and see that everything's still there. Go talk to her about getting rid of the other evil chick. Showing her the toad, basically, she says this is the king's toad, and it, like, is drawn to him. Let's him know, like, when things are wrong, so you have to get this toad back to the proper king. So you see her show up and she's afraid of the bat, so that gives you a clue that she's probably afraid of anything rodent-like. And you just so happen to have a toy rat. And sure enough, that does it. And there goes your toy rat. So now you have a rope to fix this, and now you can go up. That takes us back over here with the lizard. Uh, if you take too long, it just kills you. So you throw the prickly pear at it, and whatever reason, whatever that is on the floor, you can't get to it. So you can see the hummingbird up there, and like it's dripping stuff, and it seems like you'd be able to get it, and you can. But later. Broken bridge makes it impossible to cross for now. So keep an eye on those hummingbirds because they'll come into play later. And here you see a stag who basically explains that he's not a stag, he's actually a dude who's been cursed. The tree that he's laying in front of is his wife who is also cursed and has that spike that's bleeding out. So now we know that we have to help both of them somehow. 
promise is a wonderful book. You are here to resort. Only for one night only. And always hungry. Thank you, Wes. You're a good son. Oh, and like King's Quest 6 you basically talk to people until they repeat uh, the same thing over and over again or that they tell you hey I don't want to talk to you You pretty much swear that you'll help him. And you can see the hummingbird is trapped, and there is a spider there. Try to talk to the spider, it says, mind your own business. The bird says he's going to kill me. So you catch the spider in the box. And then throw the box away. And now you're able to free the bird and tear down the web. And it gives you a new passage to go through. And the bird says, hey, I'll help you sometime. And this was probably the worst part of the game. Probably the worst part of any Sierra game. The voice acting is beyond atrocious. I don't even know how to describe it. This dog, like I said, he's one of the super annoying voices. There's quite a few. There's the other one. The sky is falling. It's... These two make Cedric's voice like sound like a smooth beautiful song so if you look everything in here is like plates and stuff like that you do see the open cage and that's what he's crying about that his bird is gone but out of all these like silverware things he randomly has this mask hanging there which is obviously very noticeable over there to the right I cannot stand that character. By far, I think the worst voice. So you look at the sign on the door, it now says, hey, I'm going to have a little like masquerade birthday party. Uh, also, it passes by very subtly, it took me a while to remember this, but when the governor dog talks to you, he says, if you go to the, if you go to the, the fake shop, basically, uh, take it with a grain of salt. And you'll see later on, he mean he meant that literally. So here's the bird that you need to take back to the uh, guy having a cow or, or the cow that was crying.
It's like a mockingbird or whatever. So if you go here and try to go in the shop, uh, it says I'm closed for now because everyone's getting ready for the party. Except for him because he's too sad. So you give him the China bird and he's super happy again. And so he gives you the mask. Which is obviously for the masquerade. And when you go outside, it is magically started. So you put it on, and then go inside. Like, most of the characters in King's Quest Seven seem to lack the typical charm that you would find. They're more annoying than anything else. And this stair thing was like, took me a while to remember which goes where and what order. So you see the room is upside down and the thing that you need from the drawer just falls on the ceiling. If you look at the mirror and you laugh and there's Fifi or whatever his name is. But there's no way to get the mirror for now. That's misleading. So when you click on the door the first time, there's a puff of smoke. So you're not sure if you can do it, so you actually have to click it again. I don't know what the point of that puff of smoke was. So you have these magic mirrors that you look at that change how you look, and that one pulls you in. And now the room is right side. So if you look at the thing that you got, it shows like this magic mirror of Rosella. So now you know where she's at. It'll show you basically whatever you're looking for. Now you'd think that was it with this whole stairs thing, but you come back here later as Rosella. that bird. So she keeps going on about the skies falling and it turns out to just be cheese. Cannot stand that character. And yeah, if you try to reach the cheese it says you can't reach it so if you do it with the stick it'll actually let you but notice over here there's something in that nest. Get that. Now if you try to go into the, the fox shop see this is what I mean. Like this took me a long time to figure out. Again about the whole grain of salt thing that he said, do it with a grain of salt. So if you're not paying attention, you could literally lose out on potential clues. So in the upper right hand corner, there's that little owl thing, which kind of looks like Cedric. So and that's like the little snout from Space Quest. So there's an assortment of like some crazy things in here. And all the masks are sold out, obviously, because of the uh, birthday thing. So you have a wooden coin. And you buy the book. He 
can see everything's still closed except for the fog shop. This giant stone dude, but we don't have what it takes to wake him up yet. So you trade the book for a crook. Now right there you can see that thing on the on the cactus. It's the uh, it's the jackal's the jackal wears fur thing or the uh, rabbit thing's fur. And I keep walking by it. And this is what I mean that you won't get dead ended because you can actually keep going back to where you were. So with the crook you get the cheese, and then now you're arrested for stealing the moon. So this guy's offering the shovel, but if you don't take it quick enough, you fall to your death. I'm actually restoring to uh, to get the fur, even though I don't. I could have technically kept playing, done Rosella's chapter, and uh, gone back and gotten the fur later. But eh, whatever. Now, since I know the third mirror pulls me in, let's see what the other mirrors do. Not so much, and off you go. Need a trigger for the moon to fall or cheese. Worst character in any Sierra game ever. Let's get the coin. Can't reach the cheese. I've already done the salt, so I'm able to go in every time now. Now we pay for the book. So since he's out of mask, he'll actually trade the mask and give you a rubber chicken.
So once again, trade the book for the crook. And then you can see, even though I came back here for the fur, I totally forgot it. But that's okay. Like I said, you can't dead end. Again, arrested for stealing the moon from the sky. We go back to Rosella, who picked up the, ha the shovel and the cave collapses. So, no going back for Rosella. Because essentially, there's no way to proceed this far without everything you need. So when you talk to this guy, he basically says he's been digging this shovel, or digging this grave with the shovel because his machine broke down. And he says that he can pretty much dig your grave later, but he's got to dig this one first. And he has this tiny stupid shovel. But he shows you the machine and says it's missing some pieces. So now we know we have to help this guy. And these kids are super annoying that are in this pumpkin, but at least they're annoying for the purpose of being annoying as characters versus the sky is falling creature. Uh, there's this monster who won't let you pass. So you see the cat and the other pain in the arse boy knock on the door. This dude's like a doctor, lets you in. It's all slumped over because, as he explains to you, he was once courageous, but he gave up his spine. So he has no spine, so he doesn't stand up to the kids anymore. He actually provides a lot of uh, detail about this area of the world that Roselle is in now. Ooga Booga or whatever it's called. This woman crying who you should not look at because she scares you to death. So once again, you see the black cat. Empty grave. If you look in the grave, it becomes yours. I thought that was clever. So if you stand in one place too long, this dude shows up and kills you. So rather than climbing the web, you use this little escalator thing. The toy scares you to death. And inside there you find the backbone that you need to give to the good doctor. You take the mummy foot, because 
Who doesn't like mummy foots? Climb outside, they get you, so don't do that. So it's interesting that I died, but I have all the inventory items uh, from the time that I died. Like, I have the foot and the spine. This creature has a broken heart, so he staples it back together and gives it to the creature. Given the spine, he basically just eats it and gets super tall. Gives you a mysterious thing in a box. So you offer this weird pet to the kids, and they're like, what? And like, put it in the basket. Doesn't seem like the type of thing you would trust these kids with. And the rat you saved becomes your friend. And it is a gravedigger's rat who actually powers his machine. He basically gives you a horn and says, uh, wherever you want me to dig your grave, just blow the horn and I'll come. Now I have my rat and I can do it with the machine. So now the kids are like, oh, this poor cat died, and yet you hear the cat inside the box. Proving these kids are horrible. So you save the cat, and the cat's happy. And the cat gives you one of his lives. Because he has nine lives, get it? So go back there and you pick up that. It's the shovel. So you wouldn't know it, but it took some time, but that's actually where your grave is going to be. You just can't stand close to it or else he shows up. So this looks like it'd be a random combination, uh, and when I was playing this, it was random. I was just trying to think of like things I'd seen, and if you do it wrong for too long, you die. But what it is, is on the house, you'll see that combination. And so you discover it's the real king, she shows up and locks you in there with him and traps you. So you show him his frog, and he's like, hey, that's my frog. He used a chisel to break his hand free, and then go through the hole and end up over in the graveyard. Gives you this rod to basically disguise him. 
and summon up a black cloak, which he will now need to use as a disguise to be mistaken as the scary woman on the corner, who is actually the wife of someone else that you'll find out in a minute. He's giving you some defoliant. So now that you're wearing that, you can scare those kids all the time. You use a defoliant on the little swap monster and it goes away. So these three plants will try to charm you to talk to them, and spraying defoliant just says that's rude, but do not approach those plants because they'll actually kill you. Getting too close to the gargoyle will also kill you. So you can see that vine is like slightly colored differently, so you can move it. Dig a hole. And then you over here talking about her plans. And if you try to come out, you know she's still there, and she kills you. do is you hide and spray the defoliant on the dog's nose, which disturbs his sense of smell. So click and look at everything, and King is like, we have to hurry up before she gets back. So you have to go through all our clothes before you get the right item. It's a mysterious plug-in zapper thing. Oh, you go to put it away, and I guess you'll keep that one. So you see, like, creatures there in the woods. If you try to go, a werewolf shows up. And there's pretty much nothing you can do, except die. So you use that, quickly escape the werewolf, go through here, and now you're in the same area as your mom was. Worst part of the game, worst area. I 
And now you can see that one mirror is boarded up that teleports you through. And this, if you look at the base, it looks a little grimy, so you shine it up real nice. Now you can read what it says. So the clue is it says feed me and get what you desire. And then that lifts up magically. It's stuck and you can't move it so you bring the troll back and then go down into the tunnel. So you see that flower up there, which we can't quite get, so we know we're coming back. So now we see the true Troll King and the fake Troll King go back to Rosella's mother, who has been arrested for stealing the moon. And they all decide, like, your fate. They basically say you have to fix the moon. And put the moon back into the sky. So you have that little slightly different colored tree. Tie the chicken, throw it up there, and that puts the moon back in the sky, according to them. And now you're free to go, but make sure you take that feather. So you talk to him, and he's basically like, he has some shady deals, he needs to track down some people. And if you give that to him, he's like, hey, I can track down the people I need. And he gives you a were beast potion. But he warns you uh, in order to use it, you need fur of another animal to impersonate. Right, let's go over here real quick to the stone creature guy. Oh, it's sleeping, but now we can use the feather. So this is how the bird helps. You hold it up and she gives you the sacred honey. Put that into here and that starts the water flowing and creates a rainbow bridge. And the guy who was cursed is a stag, drinks the water, and he is now free of the curse. And he manages to pull out the spike but now she's bleeding. So he's like, I'm going to try to heal her.
So it's right about now that I realize I don't have the fur. And I have to go back to go get the fur of the jackrabbit thing. So you combine the fur with the potion, zip through with the speed of the jackrabbit, get past the werewolf, knock out all his fur. The swamp creature shows up, then the prince dude who was cursed as a stag shows up, gets rid of it. So every time you go into that screen where the hole is, if you hear the dog barking, that means you can't go in there because the dog will alert the evil person. So now she's an Ooga Booga. And you ask, have you seen my daughter Rosella? And he explains, yes, I have. And goes on to talk about it. Now she climbs up into the kid's thing. You can see the mummy has a bone. So right there you see the skull, the bat, the spider. That's actually a combination to the crypt that Rosella was stuck in. Give this to the shadow dog. And he's like, hey, we can be friends. And when you talk to him, he talks about that his master was killed and stuff like that. And that's who's in the crypt. And the woman crying at the crypt is the wife. So he is lonely without his master. So you take his collar, because that seems like a good idea. That was sarcasm. Like, dogs shouldn't be walking around without collars, because no one knows who they belong to at that point. Now you notice she's standing now, no longer kneeling. And sees that, and she takes it and leaves. Now you see the headless horseman going and riding around. So it's locked, and there's an inscription about how he's cursed. So you see that there's a firecracker, and here's the part that I was talking about. So you take the firecracker, you look at it, and you're like, okay, cool, it's a firecracker. I didn't even get off the screen before it blew up on me. And then boom, again. Boom, again. Boom, again. Finally, get it in there, and you go inside. You see the loyal dog, and now you have his head to return it to him. This is just a matter of timing. You stand here and try to click on him as he goes whizzing by. So you hold it out to him, and he's like, It's my head. And he kindly thanks you, the dog shows up, the dog's happy, the woman returns, 
She goes from this scary visage to a beautiful blonde woman. And so he gives you the steed and says, hey, just call in the steed and it'll take you here every, every time you need it. And this part of the game was more annoying than anything. Uh, there was a lot that I, I'd actually forgotten about this portion of the game. And for some reason, it doesn't happen there, but when I go back and forth on that screen later, it lags um, because of those fairies. So you see those glistening fruits, so you just climb on a tree, grab the glistening fruit. And if you stay there too long and don't hide or something, the wind gets you. So, I'm actually trying to walk down and not into the cave, and that kept happening. And there's a thing, so when those fairies are near you, they'll play a certain tune, also when you give them the fruit. It doesn't do anything. It's supposed to be playing a tune, but it doesn't. It just locks up. But every time they see you, they play like a small tune, so... It's, I'm sure it's saying or playing something, but the game is actually broken. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there with that cursor. So as you strum this little harp, it plays the same related beats as the uh, fairies. You just need to find out which which one it is and play it in the right order. And that's how you know you've played it in the right order. You touch the ball and then you see the three sisters' fates. And you can see from how quick she walks there from the previous screen with the fairies that there's already that weird like lag on that screen. So see how slow she's walking here? And see how fast she walks there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just mapping which rainbows go where, because I don't remember by memory which uh, rainbows will take me where. So you go put the sacred fruit on the other horn. And it bears more fruit. So you take a pomegranate. So when you give the pomegranate to him, he's like, hey, I've heard that can help, like, heal wounds and stuff. So you try it, and ta-da! 
So both of the statues basically fix their quest. And he says, I have some business to attend to, even though I've been waiting for my wife. And she's like, and I have to fix the land. So these little flowers spring up and stuff like that, but nothing is clickable. Notice that that is still clickable, so you go over there and pick up another pomegranate. He asked him about the spare parts, and he's talking about Ooga Booga is going to blow up. So he has spare parts for people in case things go really, really wrong. So when you sit there, she goes to sleep and has a dream. So that dream is basically, it gives you the information you need to give a clue as to what you've seen when you go tell the fates. So once again, you have to remember which ones were the right ones. So you tell him about the dream, about the one woman frozen in the ice. And see, there it is again, how slow she's typing. And this is like a sped up version. It's painful in normal speed. Come back, talk to them about how what the girl said about the land. And they give you a dream weaver. Or sorry, a dream catcher. So now, with the Dreamcatcher, you're able to use it to catch that nightmare of a monster. Talk to him, he gives you a magic carpet and says that'll help you get there. So now if you look at the, the dream catcher, you do notice that it's got something caught in it, which is the beast.
So as I was saying before, if you enter the screen and you hear the dog barking, you can't go in there because the dog will basically point you out. And you can see how many times I had to go back and forth on this screen. So here's what happens if you actually go in there while the dog is there. You don't even pause or anything, you just get killed. So basically you just exit and come back until that dog starts barking, but it doesn't seem to be working for me. And this is a big flaw in this game. Because essentially I'm stuck until that dog goes away. So I use the horse, go away. Let's try to go back down. Go over there again. And the dog is still there. There's essentially nothing else I can do up at this point. I need to get into the house and clearly can't because of the dog. Sierra should do something that fixes it that after like five or six times the dog is automatically gone at the most. Maybe even two or three times. So now I've saved and the dog has stopped barking and now it's safe to go into the hole. And once again, you hear her, so you know that you can't just immediately climb out until she says that she's gone, but she's not gone yet. So if you do that, she kills you. So you hide. And now she's gone. So you take the crystal that powers the light. Nothing in the closed drawer that you want. So now you get out. All of that for that small stupid crystal. Hold the crystal to the light and it becomes charged. Now you take the magic carpet and the beast shows up. You use a dream catcher to release the beast you captured. Go forward and fall just like the dream. Swim just like the dream. Go to the island just like the dream. And there she is. You use the sun charged crystal to melt the other crystal. And it's like, hey, I helped free you. Ooga Booga and all this other stuff is about to go down. And she teleports you away. So, what you have there is like a bridal thing, and she says, ride it to catch the winds. So you see if you hide, the horse will come by, and so does the evil guy. But if you're hiding, the evil guy won't find you. So you get it on the horse. And the wind starts fighting. The, the main king of the wind guys shows up. He's like, what's going on? And you can see in the distance, the volcano is like looking a little fiery. So he summons the winds and says, do my bidding, go find them. After a while, the rulers of the land show up. You'll find out who they are also later. And they fly away. And she's like, hey, what about my Rosella? 
So now you have the two kings going back to Rosella and they're duking it out. And it's hard to tell which one's which. So it's up to you to put it into the fight before she shows up. So the ideal thing is use like the staff on one of them, right? But who? And if you do it on the wrong one, it goes poorly for you. So it almost seems like you're trying to figure out who's who, but there's more to this, and this took me quite a few tries to remember, and I don't know where the clue is that would tell you what you need to actually do, because, as you'll see, I die quite a bit. So when I'm targeting the right one, it says Drats, and you can see that there's this thing here, and you can click it, and there's a TNF, I'm assuming true and false. I have no idea. So the fake king turns out to be Edgar from King's Quest 4. And she teleports you away on this cliff with the rising lava. So you use the shovel basically to dig your way out. Which doesn't make a lot of sense because when the lava rises, it'll actually fill that place up. So, uh, still can't reach the flower, so you use the shovel to levy it, and then you climb it and get the flower. And you click this, click that, and then. So, you have the mysterious device which you can plug in after you try to wake up the king, and it starts charging. Use the flower to wake up the king. He's like, we have to put a stop to this because the lava is about to blow. And they laugh and they're like, oh, we found each other. And everything seems like it's the end of the game, but we haven't taken care of the evil woman. Ta-da. And this took me a few tries, too, to figure out. She strikes down Edgar and kills him, and you get the thing that seems charged, but nope. Do that whole thing over again, charge it, try to wake him up with flour. He puts a stop to it, lava's about to come out, he saves the day, everyone's giggling, the family's reunited. And you can see that thing behind Rosella is like fully charged and glowing now. And so Edgar and her duke it out, and that's Edgar's aunt by the way, the evil chick who then kills Edgar. And takes her a while to charge up her next spell, and doop, kills me. So once again, ha ha ha, family, Edgar. Edgar dies again. Thing is fully charged, can't figure out how to uh, kill her. Alright, so now we've just gotten to the point where it's just restoring for the point where he stops the lava. And she kills Edgar, <laughs> got the thing, and this time I managed to do it correctly, and I'm not even sure what I did, but it basically turns her into a baby, instead of killing her, like what she did to Edgar. You give the cat's life that you got from Edgar to Edgar, and that restores his life, and it turns out the rulers of this land are his parents. And they say, well, maybe we can give the baby a second chance. Edgar essentially says, I would love for you to stay and rule the land. And she agrees. And we get the happy ending. There's an ending, if I remember correctly, where things don't work out so well. Like, you don't save Edgar or something like that. And that's it for King's Quest Seven.